Kassos and welcome to Vasilis Garden. Now we all love growing our flowers and veggies. Now have you ever tried growing something unusual? Something that doesn't really grow well here in Victoria? Our climates have changed, our temperature is getting warmer all the time, so we're not as much of a cold climate region as we used to be. Now we've got some crazy plants growing down here at Karen's place, stuff that you'd normally see in the northern region of Australia. Now we're going to meet Karen, she's going to take us for a tour around the garden, check all the different varieties and learn how to grow them here in Victoria so you can enjoy them too. Now for the rest of you around Australia, tell us if we're doing it right. If not, just sit back, relax and enjoy the show. How are you going, Karen? <laughs> Did I scare you, did I? I wasn't ready for you. <laughs> oh, well, how are you? Oh, well, thank you. How are you? I'm very well, and thank you for having us here in, through your garden. And we're going to have a bit of a tour. I've told everybody that you've got some unusual plants growing in the garden. I have, I have. Got yeah. lots of strange and wonderful things. Wonderful. Mm. So tell mm. us a little bit about your background now. You're a horticulturalist. Mm -hmm. yep. um, I was at Melbourne Zoo and mm. I did my gardening apprenticeship. Okay. So um, then I, that, that was a great place for learning about a big variety of plants and yeah. landscapes. And then I went to Burnley, the old institution. And, it's not um, around anymore? Um, as it, it's been taken over by Melbourne Uni, so it's a little bit okay. different. But okay. uh, Burnley and studied nursery management and yeah. uh, production, which just taught me more about how the roots of plants grow and, and, and scheduling of plants and things like that. But it was okay. quite good for learning about plants. And general mm. plants growing. Okay, mm. so what are we looking at here at the moment? So we're standing here in a nice little section of your garden. Um, this is a little wicking bed, yes. so a little above ground wicking yeah. bed. Uh, so it's like a self-watering pot, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so in here, I've got celery and some red ribbed chicory. Yeah. And uh, the red rib chicory I was just picking to give to the chickens. So, um, and it's handy as a cooked veggie, as you would know, because it's yeah, a, yeah. a favourite of uh, Greek and Italian. So, well, yeah, I like this it. Is, this is a wicking bed, raised garden mm. bed, and it's all about edible plants for you? Edible plants, yeah. definitely. There's, there's a handful of things here that aren't edible. They yeah. might be good for flowering or for bees yeah. or something like that. But yeah. bas basically, my collection is all, my obsession is edible plants. <laughs> <laughs> oh, check it out. So, what have we got in here? What sort um, of soil? Oh, so down the bottom is uh, the uh, soil, sorry, the water retention layer. So that's... What do you use for that? Uh, you can either use screenings. This particular one's got whitewashed sand, so just okay. sand. All right, um, so let's go from the stages. We've got 900 high bed. Yeah, this about. one is a little bit, yeah, this one's, most, a lot of wicking beds are usually only about 450 high or sorry, yeah. 600 high. Yep. This one's a little bit higher because I yep. wanted to see if I could make it a bit more ergonomic as an okay. experiment. Okay. So the bottom layer, about 100 mil or so, right. yep. uh, has an eggy pipe through it. Around and, it? So and then you what water does it from the, And you water from the top with these yep. ones and the water goes down to the bottom into the um, aggie pipes down the bottom, the slotted right. aggie pipes. So you can actually monitor the height of water in there? Yes, so this tells me that it's kind of got some moisture at the moment because it's been raining but I need to add some. Normally a wicking bed would mm -hmm. sit about 450 high which is about that? Roughly speaking, because you've got your um, your water retention layer and then you have and then you have your soil. Okay, so, so you, you've got soil or sand how far up? Uh, I've still got the soil, the sand, at sorry, the sand, only about water. 200 high, or All sorry, right. 100 high right. with the aggie pipe through it. Yep. And then I've got, you normally use a geotextile fabric. Yep. The day I did it, I didn't have any, so yeah, I used shade so, cloth. And it's you working. can use shade cloth, it it's works fine. fine. It just yeah. stops the soil from blending in with the sand. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Okay. And then you put your soil on top. So right. uh, you can see this, I've got this much soil rather than just one shovel depth. But Usually that's it's like, one shovel depth. Yeah, but yeah. That, that'd be okay if it's you're growing fine. root plants like uh, carrots and turnips and things like that, parsnips. Yeah. That's okay. Well, supposedly the idea is that the water water won't necessarily wick up as easily to this height, yeah, but I wanted to try far. it to see and how is it, it working? It seems to work fine. After so, four yeah. days of heavy rain, torrential yeah, rains yeah. here in Melbourne, of course it's working. <laughs> Look at them, they've all grown. And one thing you need to know with wicking beds is you need to put a mosquito cover to stop the mosquitoes breeding. In. Oh, on the part that goes yeah, down yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. I learned that the hard way. Okay. Yeah, we get a lot of mosquitoes. <laughs> <laughs> Did you learn this at Melbourne Uni? Uh, Melbourne Uni, Melbourne Zoo? Uh, no, no, this, these are all pretty recent wicking beds. Well, the knowledge of wicking beds in the general gardening community has only been probably the last three years or so. So I think I just learned this on the internet or an article. Not oh, sure. Actually, it was an article in Earth Garden. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Well, there you go. There's plenty yeah. of info out there for you folks. If you want to learn more about it, get onto our website also. For such a build-up area here in the garden, do you get a lot of problems with fungal and insects? Um, insects, ladybirds t seem to take care of most oh, of it, good. but uh, fungal diseases, this particular grape for instance, the yeah. strawberry grape, is a variety that just doesn't need spraying, even with milk spray. Check it out, she's even got some grapes still here, fantastic! Oh, look at that. It's been about three hours since I last had a grape, I think. <laughs> or maybe two. Do you want one? Yeah, thank you. Yep. 
They just smell one. and taste just like strawberries. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They smell okay. and taste like strawberries. They do. And see the netting here? Now, Karen's used this to protect the actual fruit, the, the strawberry grapefruit there from the birds. Now, normally she would use the bird netting, but she found this year she lost 20 bunches because the actual holes on the bird netting are large enough for the birds to poke through and eat the fruit itself. So she's used this small netting, the stuff that you would find like from onion bags or even garlic bags. The small netting holes are perfect. Just sit them over the top, tie them to the stem at the top of the grape or bunch of grapes and let it hang over. That way the birds can't get into it, the holes are too small and you've got plenty of grapes to enjoy with your family. Hey Vasily, come and check out my pepinos. Check them out, they're pretty cool. How old's this plant? Oh, it might be 10 or something years old. It's a bit you've of a monster. Con yeah, but you've <laughs> contained it pretty well for a 10 year old pepino plant. <laughs> I just keep hacking it and hacking yeah. it. <laughs> what have you got, got it growing on? Um, it just grows up the side of the veggie fence. So it really yeah. likes to climb actually. Because mm. a lot of people grow those on the ground, but yeah. they and seem to like to climb. They're better for the fruit too. It keeps them clean yeah. and yeah, get yeah. more air circulation. Yeah. How do you eat these? Uh, I just peel off peel off the skin and just yeah. eat them. Yeah. And just eat them fresh? Yeah, yeah, they're really nice that way. When do they yeah. ripen? Um, when you feel the, if you can squeeze them just lightly like that, see yeah. that little bruise? Yeah. That little, that, yeah. Then they're ripe. Yeah. They're ripe are Otherwise, they? if they're really nice and golden. Are they? Yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> Do I have to peel the skin, or is it? Well, you can sink your fangs into it instead. What's wrong? <laughs> what you've usually never eaten a peel, potato. Usually, I peel them. First. By the time you peel them, man, <laughs> oh God, I have everything. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Uh, I know what you're thinking. <laughs> <laughs> that one that looks like the right one, isn't it, eh? Oh yeah, baby. <laughs> Check it out, folks. Have a look at this. Now, that's what we're talking about. Apple. It is the season for picking now, isn't it? It is. It is. So yeah, we yeah. pretty much find And falling. Every, and falling. If you don't pick them quick enough and yeah. eat them. We're talking apples here, folks. Now, this apple tree isn't your normal apple tree that you would find in, I suppose, in every backyard. This is a weeper. Yeah, it's a yeah. weeping standard. A, yep. a weeping wand and pride. Yep. Also called weeping wand and glory. Yep. And hmm. it's producing fruit? A lot of fruit. It, yep. The only thing I'd say about it is it doesn't, uh, the apples don't last very well, so they're not good keeping apples. Okay. So you need to process them, or stew them. them or eat them or, yeah. if you're here, eat them, stew them, <laughs> stew them or dehydrate them. I am here, my dear. <laughs> and that was that, the apple. <laughs> If you haven't got a fruit tree in your garden <laughs> and you haven't eaten a fruit out of someone's backyard, you haven't lived. <laughs> Am I right? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Prove me wrong. The fact is fruit trees are everywhere. Grow some in your backyard. What are the problems that you have with the actual apple tree? Um, the, really the main thing I have is codling moth. Hmm. So I do get codling moth. If you're really good with the traps and I put it, put them in every year, I get, like after two or three years I did have it quite clean and then I lapsed for a few years and okay. it's built up again. So. Are we talking pheromone traps or something? A like pheromone trap, sorry. Yeah, you want to show yeah, us one? Yeah. Uh, so that, that's the trap. Yeah, it's a little little triangle to keep it from the weather, and then inside there's some sticky paper. Okay. And then you put the um, the little pheromone um, tubes from tube lure, yeah, yeah, the thing that gives off the moth pheromones. Okay. And supposedly you catch the moths, but uh, you've got everything besides that. I seem to call it cockroaches. Yeah. Okay. Cockroach. So the idea <laughs> the idea is that. The, the, it deters. Oh, and earwigs. And earwigs, they're okay. There's some moths, and there we go. We do have some oriental fruit moths. There, there we are. Yeah. There's the moth there. Tiny little full, four or five millimetre moth, sort mm. of grey in colour, brownish grey in colour. That can cause the problems. Now, this is actually to catch it and not scare it out, basically. Is no, what this you're is a, the sticky paper that they get attracted they, by the pheromone and then and they, they get, get stuck, stuck onto to it. The paper, yeah. And now you've got it all over the bench. And these are the apples I spotted earlier, folks. Where are they from? Uh, that's from the other um, larger tree in the back garden. So this is Golden Delicious. That's not an apple. No, that's a babago. You got one of these growing in the garden. Yes, yes, yeah, right. It's also called a Highland pawpaw, and it's yeah. right at the back fence, and it's in a little squeezed area. These Looks are, like a pawpaw, but it, it doesn't does. taste like it. Yeah. No, I know what it oh, tastes like. like. <laughs> that one's not ripe, otherwise you could eat it. <laughs> I can see that, and I'm a little bit disappointed here, folks. You knew I was coming today, so you haven't got one ripe. I ate all the other ones. <laughs> yeah, and these are nice golden... Yeah, Coles, gold sweet. drop, whatever they call it. Oh, golden delicious. Golden yeah. delicious. And there's a bit of coddling moth, but okay, that doesn't so, matter. Yeah, there's a bit of action in there. Yeah. You can see it's still quite alive in there. Oh, well. So this is what it looks like when you get coddling moth on your apple trees. If you have got it on your tree, on your fruit like that, just cut it out. Just cut it out, yeah. And that's what you're going to do? Use Are you just going to stew these or something? Yeah, stew and dehydrate too. I like yep. to uh, make dried apples. Beautiful. I Slice can give them. you a taste of that if you like. <laughs> Are you asking? Yeah. <laughs> Don't be asking, <laughs> just be offering. Yeah, I can offer. I can offer. <laughs>
We've got apples with blemishes on them, stuff you'll never see on the supermarket shelf, even stuff that you probably throw out if you spotted it like that on the, mm. on the tree. But in your case here, you've basically cleaned them all out, cut mm. them up, cut them up, put them in a dehydrator, mm. and these are so tasty. They'll last a year, they'll last one year, but they sometimes last two, they'll last a long time. They're old English game bantams. Okay, so, they're so they're quite they're, small. obviously they're not on any antibiotics because they're tiny. There's certainly no steroids. <laughs> no <laughs> steroids here. <laughs> so what sort of eggs do you have? Do they make them big? Well, they're about the equivalent of a small, a yeah. small chicken egg. So yeah. they're not too bad. Your chickens are very smart, aren't they? They even put a date on the egg <laughs> when they laid it. <laughs> yeah, that's yesterday's. That's today's. And what do they taste like? I just like normal eggs. Are yeah. they ripe? <laughs> now the chickens make you lots of compost, organic matter that you can dig it up and you obviously would dig all this up and spread it around the garden. Yeah, it gets spread around, yeah. 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 And how often would you be doing that? Um, I'm pretty new to chickens, I've only had them since October, but maybe every couple of months or so. Yeah, so, that's fine, months, depending yeah. on how quick they actually break it all down for you too. Exactly, yeah. And there's yeah, your yeah. nature's own compost ready mm. for, for spreading around the garden. Mm. Just under these beautiful trees and there's a, hey. Fig tree! I can see it from there. <laughs> oh, check it out. There's one ripe one here just for Vasily. It's been waiting for me. <laughs> it's a nice black fig. Mm. Mm. Well fertilised oh. by chickens. <laughs> oh, yeah. I won't say you can taste the chicken fertiliser. <laughs> you can taste the flavours of the fig here. Yeah, it's a good, a good little the, fig tree. Yeah. Mm. And mm. you basically from a cutting? Oh, no, this one I actually bought um, as a tree because I got impatient. Oh, so you... <laughs> Hurry up and grow. <laughs> you now, along the back fence line here, folks, we've just seen the babago there. We've got a fig tree there. We've got a couple of other varieties. What were they again? Uh, there's a big elderflower or elderberry, it's wow, also called. That's, yeah, that's right. Mm. That's huge there. And you've mm. got a banana tree here growing here. Mm. Vasily, so have a look at this avocado. Oh, check it out. It's a gorgeous specimen. Oh, mm. yeah. Mm. This mm. is a nice tree. Is that ripe? No, it's not right. <laughs> Someone's a bit scared there. Let's have a look at this. Wait a second. How old is this tree now? Uh, it's probably about five years, in the, five or six years old. Five, maybe seven. It's a grafted uh, bacon, variety bacon. of bacon, which is a funny name for an avocado. <laughs> I could, hash and bacon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like you could have your egg and bacon and hash browns. Yeah, yeah. All yeah. right, so tell me about this avocado tree, because a lot of people grow avocado mm. and they struggle with their trees to produce fruit. Mm, mm. They flower. Mm. But for some reason, they're not setting fruit. Do mm. you know much about natural um, fruiting? In Melbourne, you're supposed to not need type A and type B. You're okay. supposed to, and, and bacon is a good one to try and grow in Melbourne because okay. it is the most cold tolerant, supposedly. Okay. Um, so we go with a cold tolerant yeah. variety, bacon. The right which variety. Is a, yep, the right yeah. variety. Mm. Now, we said, you said A and B. We're talking flower type here. It's to do with the time that they flower, apparently, and yep. it's actually quite complex and I'd have to look it up again to be able to tell you. I'll make it simple for you. <coughs> male, female. <laughs> in the morning one's a male That's or a right. female and in the afternoon it, vice mm, versa mm, and mm. it's the timing of it that they're all males at the same time or mm. all females at the same yeah, time yeah. and the climate and temperature and the sun factor and the wind all play a role with it's it. A, they're complicated fruits but mm. um, this I've got a friend who's got one one year ahead of mine when yep. you're older yep. and hers has had five fruit the first year and now ten fruit so I'm, I You're basically expecting? think I'm following her and next year I'll, you know, so you happily get, get seven fruit. Yep. Yes, yeah, oh. this year I've got three, so that's good. There's only two here. There's, What's happened to the there's other one? There's one there and one there. Oh, okay. So one, two, three, yeah. All right, yeah. there's only three. All right, yeah, I'm not yeah, that yeah. bad, am I? <laughs> oh, I'm not going to touch them. All right, let's Don't go. Don't touch them. Oh, wait. All right. Raspberry cage. Raspberry, yes. And how um, many you got in there? Are they uh, all the same variety? Look, there's a mixture. I actually got them from different people, like yep. just pieces. Yes. And I've given lots of pieces to other people, yeah. so they're really easy to propagate. Um, but I'm pretty sure they're probably Williamette, so yep. they, they fruit once in November really, really quite well. And this yep. area, we got about three kilos this November. That's pretty good. Because of all the rain, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they, yeah. they should be building up to another fruiting in autumn sometime. So, okay. Hmm, hmm. And then you cut them back down hard, or do you just thin them out? Um, this particular type, you cut out the one the canes that have fruited this yes. year, and you leave the newly shooted. Yes, yeah, so all the succulent. Canes. Types, yeah, 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 you yeah. can see the difference. So alternating, in the stem. two years, yeah. two year cycle. Basically, yeah. mm. now we've got this yes. also covered here with bird netting, folks, so we can protect them. And obviously, you haven't got any birds this time of the year, but I suppose you let the chickens run around in there. Uh, actually, yeah, I put this on the other day because it was a very hot day, and yeah. I put this over so the chickens could be in here away yeah. from the neighbourhood cats. Okay, so they're just scratching around for the day. Mm. Yeah. Now we've also got this big tree behind us here. Now that's an apple tree, and you've got that covered. 
Now, we all know about bird netting, we all use bird netting mm. some form or other. The important factor about bird netting is to make sure that when you do drape it over your plants, whether they're trees or shrubs, that you actually tighten it properly. Mm. Mm -hmm. So that when birds do try to attack, they don't get themselves tangled up and, uh, and, and damaged and hurt themselves with the bird netting being loose. So that's a good one there. And what type of apple tree? Oh, this is a golden delicious. So that's some of the ones we looked at earlier. Mm. These are ripe, aren't they? They're ripe, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh -oh. This reminds me of my days at the zoo. Caged animals. Are you right? <laughs> <laughs> no, do I look like a gorilla to you, do I? <laughs> <laughs> they used to like a bit of apples as well. <laughs> uh, aquaponics is like a combination of aquaculture or fish growing yep. and hydroponics, so mm. growing in water. Mm -hmm. So this is a really old fashioned system. It's a flood and drain system. Yes. So I found that because of using the flood and drain, there's a period of dryness. Yes. And so I can't seem to grow lettuces like you would normally grow in hydroponics. So okay. until I uh, modify the system, there's there's the pump coming on. So, so that's the noise yeah. from the pump turning yeah, yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. All right. So once once every hour on the on the hour every hour during the day, yeah. the water is pumped up from the bottom of the fish area, and yeah. that brings the ammonia or fish waste. Yeah. Yes. And then the bacteria living on these rocks, the nitro bacteria breaks the ammonia into nitrite yep. and then finally into nitrate. And nitrate's yes. the only thing that's harmless to fish. Okay. So it essentially the plants and the rocks filter the water. So the period of time that it takes to actually filter flood and drain is, is the required amount of time for it to convert from um, no, nitrate I think the, to nitrate? I think or the nitrogen um, cycling habits. is happening all the time, all the just time. gradually. Okay. Um, but the, the water is just that you can only, you've got the limitations of your electronic devices and yes. you can only run the controller a certain amount okay. of times a day. Okay, fair really. enough. And you're using a rock here, like a scoria. You can use the clay balls. Supposedly they have a higher embedded energy, so yes. this is supposed to be slightly better for the environment. Okay. I have to say it's horrible to use on your hands. <laughs> yeah, really coarse. So it might be a really environmentally wonderful, but it's a horrible thing to use. Would you consider using a smaller grade? Uh, yes, definitely. Next time I will. <laughs> <laughs> Did you shovel it by fingers? <laughs> uh, yeah, when you go to plant, it's, yeah. it's really quite nasty. So yeah, you learn all these things yeah. from experience. <laughs> yeah, just throw it out on the ground, step on it a few weeks yeah, in a row, yeah, it'll yeah, crumble it down, down a bit yeah, and yeah. throw and, it back in there and, again. And scoria does actually break down too, so you get little particles in the bottom yeah. of your tank, so we sometimes use a, um, a, a little sock, a little yep. sock on the end of our outlet. To filter it yeah, out through. Yeah. Giant Burmese honeysuckle. Burmese, so we just mm. take the stamens out? Oh, you can just usually suck the end of it. Yeah, yeah, usually get a little bit of nectar. Do I eat that? When? <laughs> really what I wanted to show you was some honey, honeycomb. Uh, wasn't that so. honey? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> What's freshly, this? Freshly harvested honeycomb. We You've got your own beehive. So. We've got two beehives. Wow. This, this is from hive number two. How long did it take him to make this? Um, probably a couple of months. Or, I mean, it doesn't take that long. Yeah, yeah but yeah, yeah. this is obviously not just, all that they made in a couple no, of no, months. No, no, no. We just kept some that looked nice to show people. So. Okay, so, so can you, I have some of that? Yeah, feel free to cut yeah, it. No, no, you cut some for okay. me. No, cut some. And not just eat it all like that? Yeah, you can just shove it in your mouth and yep. then you just get a little bit of wax in your mouth afterwards. Yeah, that's okay. Just coat the insides it's of really, it. It smells really good. Oh, wow. Mmm. Wow. Mm. <laughs> oh. What is going on here? <laughs> this is a an edible display, and this is in the, going to be in the shape of a car, and it's for a festival at Whittlesea. Hmm. Oh, okay. Hmm. I'm going to be there too. Oh, so excellent! This, you can talk am about I going to get people. to eat this at Whittlesea? Uh, Jeez, after sweet. people see it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, okay. So we've got the two tyres here. We've got everybody, uh, friends, friends, sort of family um, friends. This is John, my partner. John. Hey, yeah, good. Thank you, mate. That's good. That's good. What are you holding on to there? The um, yeah. Yeah, they're pretty good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's a gardener, isn't he? I can smell him a mile away. <laughs> Took poo all over. <laughs> and lovely lady friends there. The um, this is J Charlotte and Joe who work for me. So. Hello. And they're potting up. And Brendan, up too. And Brendan. Yep. Don't forget me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we don't want to forget Brendan. Now, <laughs> you're the brains behind all this, <laughs> are you, Brendan? Yeah. Well, I'll take some of the credit. How's you're that? You're a mechanical engineer by trade, aren't you? That is correct, yes. <laughs> That's I right. am. <laughs> Get out of here. Yeah, I used to eat for Qantas. <laughs> wow. See, it's all the healthy fruit that I eat, yeah. folks. I can read people's minds. 
<laughs> All right, so we've got some, some polystyrene foam, and they're actually quite good as a as a pot. To, yeah, they're to great. They're great for planting vegetables. Yeah. So here we've got some uh, some kale and some celery and some cabbages, just growing like a little, just like they would in the garden, a little crop. So how long would this take to take on? Um, well, they, these are going to be in the, in, used in the display in a two or three weeks' time, so they'll be fine. Well, they'll up, be, triple up in size. Yeah, they'll grow quite well. We'll feed them with some sea, liquid sea salt and things mm -hmm. like that. Mm. Excellent so, stuff. So this is representing different cultural groups. So we've got some water chestnuts and daylilies and chilies for the Viet Vietnamese part of Whittlesea, Viet Vietnamese community. We've got some oregano and some rosemary for the Greek and Italian parts of the community. And um, The Aussies, what do they eat? A bit of everything, probably. <laughs> no potatoes? <laughs> no, English? no potatoes, no, no, no. <laughs> We've got some lettuces and, um, yeah, things that are also for the right time of year. So, okay, so yeah, what, the concept of the car, what's that, on the move or something? Or? Uh, the idea, I think, is that they wanted to show, the, uh, the space is going to be five metres by two and a half, which is a, regular, a normal car space, and so they want to show that instead of having a car parking space, <laughs> you can have a garden. <laughs> I like it. I'm just seeing all the car spaces outside as gardens there. Yes, that, yeah, that yeah, this is the great. idea. Take them over and make them into gardens. Well, yeah. it, all jokes aside, I think the nature strips would be a great way to start. With nature a, a, strips, excellent. Yeah, Get rid of the grass and put in some veggies. Yeah, what have you got growing in yours? Uh, I've got small garden beds, but I've got some two pairs of pistachios, yeah. a locut and a, a calamata olive, and, uh, and some little, um, some vlita. Vlita? 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 You're kidding. No, I like vlita. On your nature strip? Yeah, on the nature strip, yeah. Let's go check it out. You guys keep partying. We'll be no, back to eat them when they're ripe. Right. Enjoy. Okay. We're out in the front garden, folks. Actually, you know what? We're outside the front garden. We're on the nature strip. This is the city of Moreland. Moreland. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. A wonderful council because they allow us to plant some, some unusual varieties, stuff that you would not normally see on the list of council plants to be allocated to the nature strip. Now, I recommend it highly. And if you have any problems, Talk to Karen, she'll help you. <laughs> because she's got it here, it's all happening. We have got male, female pistachio trees. These are the ones here. Mm -hmm. There's a male and a female. Yep, mm -hmm. so you have, obviously they're a bit young to produce yeah. any fruit yet. Yeah, another three years or Yeah, but they'll so. be fantastic. Yeah. And yeah. underneath it, this is what you plant a vlita. Now mm. we're talking about amaranth. This is a fantastic plant with a droopy red flower or mm. crimson pink flower that cascades down. This is, what's some that? Sunflowers oh, the sunflowers. That are <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. Some sunflowers around here. We've got an olive tree. Check it out. This is an olive tree. We've still got room for the grass because the grass is nice and green. Keeps the soil protected. It doesn't dry out too hard. So a nice, and you've got olives on it. How did you manage that one? It's very small, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Look at the olives. Well, Two. It's a large, one of the large fruiting calamatas. Yeah. So, yeah. You mm -hmm. know, people mm -hmm. complain that they can't get their calamata olive or the jumbo calamata to actually fruit that's properly. That's jumbo, that's what it is. Yeah. 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 So yeah. You've, well, you've hopefully it will. It's probably got a lot of friends in the neighbour's trees. Yeah, so. a lot of passion too, obviously, because you mm -hmm. love your plants. And mm -hmm. you've put a little bit of mulch around the base mm -hmm. and you've got an aggie pipe there so you can actually deep water, yeah, deep which water, is excellent. Yeah, this yeah. is what we're talking about here so the grass can get a good soaking too. Mm -hmm. If we can get it, at that, that, that grass is right there. <laughs> in there but that helps the deep rooting mm -hmm. and watering now grass is doing really well now over here as you are where you are standing folks is the road now we're walking down a pathway two more pistachio trees growing with an amazing sunflower have a look at the pattern on that that a is like pattern. one of those yeah. petroleum company signs yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you recognize that one eh? oh well that's a beautiful flower that's nature at Gorgeous its best mm. okay so we've got Hopefully the give you some sunflower seeds for the chickens you see yes mm. Mm. they love you for that and they mm. give you plenty of eggs and what's mm. this a uh, locust tree i know yeah. it's a locust tree but oh sorry which variety yeah yeah no 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 oh. it's, it's in the middle of your nature strip yes you said you can't grow it. them <laughs> we've got what five meters up in growth to come along and about six meters in diameter Around. Yeah, okay. I, won't, I won't let it get huge, but no, you know, it's, it's there. Yeah, but I think a locust you can put the nature strip because people won't steal all your locusts. So that's true. Look, <laughs> I don't mind nat natives. You know, indigenous plants too to our region. Mm. They're important to have. We want to keep our, our our wildlife going, our flora and fauna and all that sort We've of got stuff. Got a nice going. native street tree anyway. Well, you have. Mm. You have got mm. the native street tree. You have got plenty of room for all the other varieties also. And there's nothing wrong with the companion planting when it comes to flowering and ed edible plants at the same time. Mm. And mm. that's what you're all about. Edible Mix garden. Mix it all up. Yeah. 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 And in incorporate lots of edible plants yes, definitely with mm. your flowers you're doing mm. a wonderful mm. job congratulations Thanks with your efforts there for I the think space you do too. <laughs> well, thank you well, mutual well. admiration <laughs> thank you so much oh look i need a hug now come here oh. <laughs> do you want to dance a zorba sure but i think my friends would like to dance too <laughs> okay let's go and get them all going with it do a big zorba dance in celebration of Excellent. all things edible let's go hey guys you ready for a dance oh jesus <laughs> they're inside they're inside they're right off 
The end of another great show, folks, here. We've got them lined up. Now, it's not only about growing plants on your nature strip, it's also entertaining everybody here. See, all the neighbours out there now are watching through their little windows how wonderfully <laughs> excited we are because we're dancing a Zorba. Are you ready? See you next week. <laughs>